my peach tree is fruiting, but there's too much fruit on these branches. Some of it has to go. Join me today as I show you how to thin the fruit on your fruit trees. Hi, I'm Gardener Scott, and I am so excited my peach tree finally has fruit. I put this in the ground about four years ago. Last year, I got two fruit. None of them made it to maturity, but this year, the tree is loaded. The natural tendency by most gardeners is to leave all this fruit on the tree. I've been waiting for four years. It's finally here. I should keep it all, right? Well, no. The best thing I can do for the fruit and for this tree is to thin off a lot of it. I also have a lot of fruit on this apple tree. Now for apple trees, for pear trees, for stone fruits like peaches and nectarines and plums, it is recommended to remove a good portion of the fruit that begins forming. There are three good reasons why you should be removing some of the fruit that forms on your trees. The first reason is so that I can increase the size of the fruit that I harvest. As the energy goes up this branch, it's feeding all of these fruits. If I leave all of them, I'll end up with a lot for harvest, but they're all going to be very small. By selectively removing some of these, what remains gets more energy, will get bigger, and the tree will be healthier overall. The tree only has so much energy to give, and especially with young fruit trees. While it has an established root system, the root system is probably not big enough to be able to support all of the fruit on this tree, the dozens of peaches that have already begun forming. That also leads us to the second reason why you should prune off some of the fruit. Because that limited amount of energy is going to the fruit, if you don't prune it off, it's not going to other parts of the tree that can benefit from that energy. Some of those other parts include the buds for next year's fruit. So by leaving everything in place, I might have a good harvest of small fruit this year. And next year, I might get nothing or close to nothing because there wasn't enough energy to form the fruit for next year. If you've seen this pattern, if you're growing fruit trees where one year you have a lot of fruit and the next year you have nothing, it could be because you're not pruning enough and the plant can't have the energy to build those buds. The third reason is so that you don't damage the tree. Now this is a Liberty apple tree. It's going to give me fruit about this size, pretty good size apple. This tree's only been in the ground for about three years. It's looking good, it's growing well, but the branches are still quite thin. When I look at the tip of this fruit spar, I see three apples forming. Now, if all three of these grow to full size, the weight is going to put a lot of stress on this small, thin branch. To leave all of the weight on this one point could be enough to tear this small branch from the bigger one. And because this bigger one has a couple other apples forming on it, the weight of all the apples could be enough to definitely bend and potentially break this bigger branch. So to minimize that, to reduce the possibility of a branch breaking, we need to take off some of these apples. The goal to be able to give the fruit enough energy to grow big, to be able to balance the energy levels of the tree for next year's fruit buds, and to ensure that we're not putting too much weight on a branch, is to space out the remaining fruit six to eight inches apart from each other. For young trees, particularly a young dwarf fruit tree, err towards the eight inches between fruit. For stronger trees, six inches should be enough. With a pair of clean, sharp pruners, I'll begin at the tip of the branch. 
as I count the fruit, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve young peaches in an area that's about eight to ten inches long. I'm going to have to take out ten of these twelve peaches. It's a tough decision, but it needs to be done. The time to do this is about three to four weeks after the petals have dropped off of the spring blossoms. The fruit should be about half an inch big, about the size of a dime or maybe your thumbnail. When it reaches that size, it's time to cut it off. Now, many stone fruits will automatically, naturally drop some of their fruit in June. You may be familiar with the June drop of the stone fruits. I did wait for that. I'm moving into the second week of June and these small fruits are about as big as I'd like them to be before I prune them off. There's been a few that have dropped, but not enough. So now's the time to actually take my pruners and cut off the ones that don't need to stay anymore. I'd like to keep the biggest and the strongest of this fruit. So as I make a decision of which ones to cut, I'm looking at the size. And so these two right here are pretty big, bigger than these smaller ones at the tip. So I actually think I'm going to cut off the ones at the tip and the first one that I will leave on the branch will be one of these big ones. The ones at the tip are also going to put the most weight on this branch. And because this is a young branch, it makes sense to go ahead and remove some of these that are at the very tip and then move into the rest. Now, if I were to see one of these little fruits that is clearly damaged or deformed, it would definitely go. Even if it was bigger than some of the others, I'd want to take it off. Now, I'm just snipping the stem that connects the fruit from the branch. You could allow these fruit to drop to the ground, but good sanitation around fruit trees is a good idea. Any fruit that drops could be food for vermin that might attack the tree. They could also harbor harmful insects and maybe even some fungal pathogens that would overwinter in the fruit on the ground. So I'm just going to stick them in my pocket for now. I can throw them in the compost pile in a little bit, but I don't want to litter the ground with any of this fruit if I don't have to. As I work my way down the tree, this one I'm keeping. So I'll cut off all the ones on either side of it. And now I'm looking about six to eight inches farther down on the branch. There's a lot of little ones between here and there, but just before the crook with this other branch, there's a good one that I'll keep. So this branch that's about a foot long will end up with two peaches on it. You might not want to count how many fruit you take off because it can be a little disheartening. I removed 19 of these little peaches to keep two. Now I do have a lot more branches and some of these are longer. So I'll probably be able to get three, maybe four on this branch, three on this branch. So I'm still going to have a few dozen peaches from this tree this year. But remember, this is just the first year that this tree is fruiting. Next year it will be stronger, the branches will be longer, there will be more of them, and every year from here on out I can expect to harvest more and more fruit, as long as I'm willing to sacrifice. I'm looking to do the same thing with this apple tree, to thin out the fruit to every six to eight inches. Now. An apple tree and pear trees are going to grow differently than the stone fruit trees. On this apple tree, I may have three small apples on this small branch, this fruiting spur, but I'm not going to have apples with this new young growth farther up the branch. 
So on each of these spurs, I want to prune back to a single fruit. And as I look at it, this biggest fruit actually looks like it's got a little bit of damage on it. So I'm going to prune it off first, looking at the other two and keeping the one that looks like it's big and undamaged. Now, if I have multiple spurs that are forming on a branch, and this is normal with older trees, I still want that six to eight inches. So if the fruiting spurs are closer than that, you might want to skip every other spur. So you'd leave one, prune off, leave one, prune off to ensure that the tree has balanced energy. I like using these hand pruners because it gives me good control over what I'm leaving and what I'm taking off. Sometimes if you just pull the fruit, especially with these very young trees, you can tear the branch. So I'd rather be safe, take a little bit extra time by cutting them off. Sometimes, like I saw with the apple tree, as you grab a few of the young fruit ready to prune off, one or two might go ahead and just fall off in your hand. That's normal, that's part of that drop. You're just accelerating it by jostling the branch. It really isn't hard to thin out your fruit trees. It might be a little time consuming, especially like me, if you've got a fence around your trees to try to keep the deer away. I'll have to move this fence when I move to the inside of the tree, but it really isn't that bad. I finished the apple tree in just a couple minutes. This will take me a little bit longer, but it's no big deal because it'll be worth it at the end of the season. If you want to see more about these fruit trees that I put into my garden, go ahead and watch one of these videos next. I'm Gardener Scott. Enjoy gardening.